What's up, brother? Dylan, I'm about to, uh, for your audio listeners, what up? And then let me get the tweets out real quick. The podcast number 53. Hey, man, man. Get down. With at Jeremy Stud. Out of your cat. Let's do predictions and day one talk. I tweeted out. Let's go. Um, let's see. Oh, I gotta get the chat pulled up. Hold up. Do you have your coffee this morning yet, bro? You know I don't drink coffee, bro. I know. I was just wondering maybe if I since this day only. one. Champion some Sundays. You don't drink like an energy drink? Nothing? Nah. If I do that, then my words start to stumble. Really? I to go over my words. Yeah, I get too, like, excited. Dang. So what do you find, like, works best for you on, like, broadcast uh, days? Like, to get energy? Days, I'd wake up, uh... Obviously, I start the day. I, I like to get early, like ready an hour and a half early before like broadcast days. So, like be ready, just ready to go, and then just start locking in. Like just scrolling through Twitty, looking at stuff. Like obviously looking at stats, but we don't have that in the beginning of the season well, yeah. so far, at least. But um, other than that, I get some small in, probably like a bagel or something, and a water, and that should be good. Dang. I can't have any of those energy drinks. It puts me in a very, very fast paced mode, and I don't like that. Yeah, mine is totally different. I wake up and I have a double shot of espresso. <laughs> I have a double shot of espresso. And then my routine is like, you're at home, but like for me, I got to go to the studio. So wake yeah. up. I, I usually like take some notes and stuff like lightly, depending on where we're at in the season. Um, some In like a couple months, I'll, my notebook will just be full, so I won't have to. But like this morning, there's not a ton of stats. So it's just like storyline yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. How many, uh, in the chat, we got a question. Uh, how many pages of analyzing right, do you guys do? Well, it depends on like caster to caster, um, mm -hmm. like, and analyst, analyst, like Allie, for example, she has like the same type of notebook I have. Her pages will literally be so full because she writes down like literally everything because she can't like remember certain things. So she writes everything down. So I even be like, yo, Allie, what happened in this map at this match? Like, uh, Lando she does like these. Disappointed. Yeah, and Lando does like these printouts that are like super helpful too that he shares. We're like we're very much a team. We we help each other a lot um, mm -hmm. with stuff. But everybody takes takes a decent amount of notes because you gotta be ready, bro. You gotta be prepared. But uh, welcome guys. This is the podcast number fifty three. I got Jeremy Stud here. We're gonna be chatting some Call of Duty. It is literally week one, bro. Like it's this is bro. crazy. Like we're starting in December, Jay. Like it's only been the game's been out for like a month and two weeks now. I think yeah, that's a month of some change. Month that's some crazy, change. but we've been grinding, bro. We've been ready. We played some eights last night. It's been fun, dude. And uh, today's matches, we got some good ones. Like we got Boston Breach, Atlanta Phase. Um, I I'm excited to see Big Wake on Breach. To be honest, we'll get into that later. Then we have Optic Texas, Minnesota Rocker. And we have the Vegas Legion, LA Thieves, and LAG versus Seattle Surge. Um, which match to you today is going to be like the biggest banger, closest game, craziest outcome? Uh, believe it or not, bro, I think for me the biggest banger, obviously there's a couple that stand out on the page, but I'm going to go with Las Vegas Legion versus LA Thieves. Yeah? I feel like the champions of last year, they're going to be riding the high horse, might come try to come in, like just be like, all right, we're them guys. Like We're playing Legion. like We should be okay. But this Legion roster is completely different, bro. Like, we've actually had the time to watch them play. Because in the beginning, yeah. they were the team that was consistently streaming their scrims from multiple different perspectives. And I feel like this team is like the hungry team. So they can come out and have a banger series versus LA Thieves to start the day. I think that, that one's the one that stands out for me. I mean, it stands out, dude. But I'm going to hesitate to say that that's like the closest match of the day. Like, I just I don't. So. I, think I so have too. to see them in a... I have to see them in a match, bro. Like, I have to see them out there playing. I mean, they're going up against LA Thieves. These guys won the championship. Honestly, this is a trap match for, for Thieves, bro. Okay. Like, uh, but I I, uh, I think Optic Rocker will be uh, one of the closer games of the day. Um, honestly, we have no idea. Like, we've seen these teams scrim. We have not seen them play in a series like Hardpoint S&D Control. Like, we don't know how it's going to go. But just based on, like, these team compositions, I'm looking at, like, 
Optic Texas, and I think they're going to be unbelievable throughout the season. Just they have a good team, I think, for the, the meta that's in this game. But I'm looking at the Minnesota Rocker, and I'm not too high on, on Rocker, but I do think they're going to be great at Search and Destroy. I think even coming in, it's going to be pretty refined. And then in terms of, like, respawn in this game, before when this roster got announced, before we had really grinded this game, Jay, I was yeah. super worried, like like about rocker in a fast paced game. And then like after playing this game for a bit and seeing how it plays, dude, you don't have to be like the cracked out player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you just hold your irons, you rotate well and rocker has talent. Like that is super doable. Like this team could actually be pretty damn good. Like if they have a good understanding of the game. So coming into this, if rocker is at a good, good understanding as it stands right now, they could easily push optic to the limit. I mean, I mean, I can see Bans rotating early, catching somebody off guard, and then Afro and Attach popping off, taking over games. So, I, to me, without going on a crazy rant, I think that's going to be the closest game, um, which would be epic if Minnesota is a really good team this year because we I, already know Toronto's going to be nasty. Yeah, I think right off the rip, what you said is like when you look at this Minnesota Rocket, just looking at the logo, you're thinking – they're going to be good at search and destroy. When are we going to be able to look at the rocker and be like, yo, this team is going to be good at hard point. You know? Maybe this year, Jay, maybe, maybe this year. This Think year. about how hard point plays. Like you don't have to be like a quote unquote, the better player, like, right? Super fast, like, gunny. Yeah. You don't got to do that. If I'm disciplined and I rotate before you and I set up in the right position and get that first kill, you are in the blender, bro. Like you're spawning far. You have to like put yourself in a tough situation. So yeah. it's like these teams that and these players that we've been watching for years that are known to make these blunders on rotation, like it's been forgiving. Like in even in Cold War at times, it'd be pretty forgiving. Last year was definitely forgiving. It's not going to be like that this year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So so that'll that'll definitely shake some things up. Um, yeah, so th those two matches for me. But uh, before we get into the other topics, let's go down and do like uh, predictions. Uh, okay. team by team and then we'll go into the other topics for the rest of the day right, bet, bet, bet. so start things off boston breach atlanta phase i want a map count prediction super early i know but let me see what you're, you're going with right now okay so boston breach versus atlanta phase i feel like this is going to be a nitty-gritty match like smg is going to come to play methods he usually starts off the beginning of the year like doing his damn thing and with awakening to the roster like they're able to slay with atlanta so i think that this series i think boston do fight but Atlanta phase are going to be able to clutch up. I feel like with the pickup of Austin, which slasher, they, their S and D is going to be a lot better. Mm -hmm. Like, so I feel like that's going to be locked up for them. All they need is a respawn. And usually when we talk about phase in that aspect, they usually are able to get one. So I'm going to go three, one Atlanta phase in this one. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's crazy. Like both these teams are kind of getting what they need on paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, you look at Atlanta phase and it's like, what do they need? Like they lost, they weren't that good at, at search and destroy last year. Yeah. I think they went 37 and 29 in search, which is by all means a great search and destroy record. But for their standards, I think they were, they were 42 and 20 the year prior in search and destroy. So they were just like far and away a top two S and D team. They weren't in that discussion last year. And they're bringing in slasher who last year was the number two search and destroy player. And not just by KD, even though he was number two in KD, he was number two in kills per round as well. So on top of like boasting a great, K KD, he was getting the kills every single round, making an impact on the game. So that's yeah. definitely beneficial for Atlanta Phase and like what they're trying to accomplish. Like Slasher, he's always been a great search player, but I think last year, having been a part of that team that won all those SDs in a row to win that championship, like he sort of ascended as Unreal. a search player to me. Like he had to, they had to be good at that. And I think for Phase, that's going to be really good for them. Like, a guy who he's great at making adjustments and things like mm -hmm. that. So it's going to help like players like a BZ who maybe get caught trying to be aggressive too much early round or, you know, the swing rounds in game. So I think they got what they needed. And then for Boston breach, like they're bringing in big wake who, what happened to Boston last year when they would struggle, it would be in the respawns yep. and they needed more slang power at times, especially out of their ARs. Like when methods was frying, they were really good Jay at hard yeah, point. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Methods, we know Zen, solid player. He cannot keep up that type of performance throughout an entire season. And more often times than not, TJ wasn't able to pick up that slack for him. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, big weight though. The, he was the guy. He was the guy that like just really, yeah. that's why they released him. because like he wasn't really consistent enough. When Methods had a bad game, TJ also had a bad game. But yeah. He switched up gun. But big wake, like they're bringing in a guy who was fourth average damage in hard points, second average damage in control. Like the guy is, his impact is felt. 
right? He's so gonna get his. he's going to get <laughs> yeah, his. So if he can do the same thing this year with Breach, they should definitely get better, especially mm -hmm. Nero entering like second year if he performs. Anyways, knowing they both got what they got, I think Atlanta Faze still take this in a 3-1 fashion. I agree with you. Um, I think uh, Faze just like, it's Atlanta Faze, man. Like, I just feel like in this first game, like when you talk about this Boston Breach team, like just looking at their SMGs and Vivid and Narrow, mm -hmm. like those guys are really fast paced. So like you have to make sure that your practice is going right because in this game in Hardpoint, you don't really have to be that fast. All you have to do is just sit a corner and play like a rat, get your kills, get clean for that and early rotate. Like, yep. so I'm, I'm really curious to see how they play because they know that they're going to begin simping and Beezy who are another fast paced SMG duo. But in this game, currently the meta is three to one and ARs versus subs. So. I'm excited to see who's running the third AR for that team, but if their pacing isn't on point, then it's going to be a tough one for them. Yeah. Um, actually, it's a good point. Like, who's going to run the third AR? I assume it'd be Vivid, mm -hmm. right, for, for mm -hmm. Boston. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, this is very much a system game. Like, who? Uh, I'm trying to – I can't wait to see, like, what teams excel at certain hills, certain maps. What up, Nick? See exposed in the chat. <laughs> We're literally Keep starting going. the beginning of the season today. Like, I know. we got no sets to go off, no power hills to go off. We don't know how teams are properly going to be setting up. Like, what's S and D strats? Everything is brand Different new. Different sort of like strats and stuff too. <laughs> like, I, you know, like we've been watching scrims and like, for example, like Mercado, like P7. The other day, I was watching uh, Legion, and they were like, "Yo, it's good to hit scrap here, hit scrap, hit scrap." And I was like, "Oh, I haven't seen a lot of teams do that yet." And it's like because mm -hmm. they want to set up like a different spawn, so mm -hmm. you know, teams don't even have the same callouts. So we're gonna see so much shit today, guys. Like we're gonna be me and Jay are gonna be like hard drives, like downloading what oh, these God. guys are doing, <laughs> like legit. Oh God! <laughs> All right, so we're both going phase three one in match one. Uh, next match, we got Optic Texas and the Minnesota Rocker. I'll leave the floor to you. Um, so this series is actually going to be intense. I feel like obviously Optic Texas, they want to start off on the right foot just like they did last year, like dominating, potentially going out and winning major one, just starting on the right foot because obviously Optic faced a lot of adversity. They got the hand injury on Illy. They could not see what their roster was like for the entire year. So now they decide to run it back. So I feel like they're all going to be fired up to obviously play with each other again, knowing that Skump, this is his last year. I feel like he put more pressure on himself than he did on his teammates mm -hmm. because now Skump, he, he they, he just labeled himself like, yo, I'm going to go out. This is going to be last year regardless of whatever happens. So like, yeah. if Skump doesn't really do good, then it's on Skump. It's not really on his team. He's going to do good. Way, people will probably find it on his team. Yeah, of course. Skump is going to definitely do good. So I'm excited to see what this Optic Texas can do now with, with the clear minds, knowing that everyone is healthy on the roster. They're probably looking at it like, yo, we could have been the best team all year last year, but that hand injury held, held us down. So now we got the potential to run it back. Let's see what we do. Skump's got the fire. Everyone's got the fire to be the best. So that's going to be a tough matchup. Going up against a Minnesota Rocker team who basically is a brand new roster. Like, yeah. the whole, it's a whole new thing. You got three new players. You got Cammy. You got Afro. You got Bance. The only guy that stayed was attached. When I look at this roster, I feel like this roster is seriously Toronto Ultra before Toronto Ultra, like with Insight, <laughs> with, yeah. with Kleenex, like I feel like that's the same players. You compare Attach to Insight, S and D, like these guys are clutching up, like Slow AR, like it's gonna be the same exact thing. But when it comes to this matchup specifically, believe it or not, last year their first matchup of the entire season, at least Minnesota side, was versus Optic Texas. It wow. went all the way to a game five. Round 11, and Optic fell short and lost. I think so, it's going to be lit, bro. I'm telling you. I think this series has the potential to go all the way to game five. I'm just really excited to see how this new Minnesota roster can really gel together because I'm excited. We know how, how explosive Afro can be. Yep. We know what Bance is going to be doing on the rotations, playing like a rat, and this game fits perfectly for him. Yep. Attach, all you got to do is get your kills, but if Kami is the guy, if Kami is the guy, like with that AR in his hand, if Sam he four. Up, he needs to, yeah, he's going to be okay. I feel like this team is going to go back and forth when it comes to these respawns. The thing that it really comes down to me is the S and D's because we know optic, they're going to be good at it, but so are Minnesota. So whoever, at least in my opinion, take map number two, we'll be able to take the series all the way into game five. You know, I think I, I agree with you. Uh, I'm going to go optic Texas in a three, two fashion. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't choose a winner. Yeah. I didn't choose a winner. Who you got? Who you got? I think I'm going to go Optic 3-2 two, two as well. Yeah, I'm going to go Optic Texas 3-2. Um, I don't know. It's just like a tough one to predict. Like, I, I feel like with this game, like, Rocker is going to pre be pretty good, as we were discussing yeah. before. Um, and then also, like, just, like, to talk about the kickoff in general, I don't think we're going to get many, like, 3-0s, like, dominating matches off no. rip. Like, no. obviously, we could be very wrong, but I just, the way this game plays is, like, it's pretty controllable and, like, You'd have to make like 
th massive blunders in a row to get like 3 0 especially early on. Like I think a lot of these teams are probably at a similar point um, in terms of skill set. They've all been grinding. But anyways, just, I think it's going to go 3 2. I think Optic is a solid search and short team as well. And under the pressure, like they're going to they're going to take that dub. It's going to be lit. Like we're on Twitch. Yeah. It's Scum's first match in the oh, year that he's retiring. Like we're going to talk about that later as well. Like this is going to be so lit. They are going to be gassed. Um, all right, next match, Las Vegas Legion versus Los Angeles Thieves. Jay, you have the floor. I think this is the upset. I think this is the upset of the day. LA Thieves, we know how infamous they are of sucking online. We saw it all <laughs> yeah. year last year. And they're coming out versus a team that's very, very hungry in Las Vegas Legion. So, and we, I've had the chance to watch them practice. I've had the chance to watch them practice against the Thieves. The Thieves are great. Thieves are a great team, championship caliber team. But I just feel like they're going to get caught slipping in this first match, have a wake-up call nice and early on in the season to mm -hmm. make sure they get on the right foot. And Las Vegas Legion are going to be able to take this one in a 3-1. I don't you, even think You got to Legion in a 3-1. That's I crazy. I just can't. I can't. I have to see it in a match. <laughs> you guys know me. I cannot do that. I got Thieves in a 3-1 fashion. Thieves are a great team, great coaching staff. Um... Mm -hmm. They won back-to-back -back events. They have so much talent. And while Vegas Legion are looking good in scrims, I'm going to pick the Thieves. And I know I might regret that, but <laughs> I haven't gotten to watch the Thieves, to be honest. I haven't seen a single one of their scrims. I've seen probably 10 Vegas Legion scrims, but uh, I'm just going to go with the champs. I, I have no, nothing really to back that up other than that. It's the Vegas Legion and the COD champ champions. So... Uh, yeah, next match, we got Los Angeles Gorillas versus the Seattle Surge. Another interesting one. It looks lopsided when you look at it. Um, yeah. But talk to me about, like, uh, this match, what you think is going to go down. Um, so this match is it's kind of up in the air for me for both of these teams. Obviously, LAG, they come up with a brand new roster. You got RCDs, you got Spark, you got Hook, the nuke. These boys are ready to play. Like, they're ready to go yeah. out there and do the damn thing. And you also got Neptune. I heard Neptune's actually really good at this game. That's what I've been hearing so far around these streets. So this is going to be a good – I, I want to see where LAG is going to be at because, obviously, LAG, they had that one miracle run last year, winning Major 2, going undefeated in Search of Destroyers, like 12, 13 win streak. Like, that was insane. No one expected that. And then, unfortunately, they didn't make champs. But then – they make this roster move, and you get a leader in RCDs. Mm -hmm. You get Spark, who's a young, confident player who is ready for his moment. You get Neptune on the bounce back, because obviously Neptune, he didn't start the year off last year with NYSL great, but then he ended the year kind of great with LAG. Totally different player with them. And then you also got Hoop the Nuke. The guy's a world champion. You know that guy's going to be able to figure it out. But you're going up against a Seattle team who didn't break last year. This is a Seattle team who were the first two years in the CDL were just absolutely atrocious. Then they come in last year with a brand new team, a very young, talented team. And they have basically two all-stars on their roster. They got Sib and they got Pred. Everybody is on the lookout for Pred. Every time I watch people play eights, they're always trying to figure out where Pred is. We cannot he's, allow that he's guy really to good terrorize this game. us. Yeah. I know. That's the thing. So I, I, I think that this series, I think LAG will show fight. But I think just the teamwork aspect from Seattle Surge not making that roster change, they will be able to close it out in a 3-1. So I had the chance to watch LAG some scrims, and they look really dang good. Like, they had good teamwork. The comms are great. Um, I think that they're going to be a solid squad. I do give Seattle the edge in this one, though, because uh, we've also gotten to see them. And yeah. Pred is, like, ridiculously annoying to deal with. He might be the most annoying player I've seen so far in this game. Uh, he gets up close, gets the kill. His anticipation is like crazy. His good, good gun skills. So when he does hit that corner after the first kill while you're looking for him, like he's able to get the second one that it then eventually puts you in the real blender, Jay, as we yeah. know how this goes. Um, and then also like the rest of their team, like for Sib and Accuracy, holding irons, playing super slow, like that is elite in this game. And those yep. guys will be like the guy you, you're like, okay, he's holding the tree heady. And then you don't see him for a second. And then he's in another spot, just pre -aim. You're like, he's still there. And then you're spawning in <laughs> Narnia and it's like nothing you could do. So I think Seattle has a really good uh, team comp for this game. And I think in the respawns, they're going to be very good. Um, and they were a solid search team last year too. So yep. uh, coming into this one, I do think it's going to be a, a closer game than what people expect. I think this one also could go game five. Uh, so I'm going to go Seattle in a 3-2 fashion. Uh, control is sort of up in the air for me. Like, I feel like offense is really hard on a lot of control maps. Um, yeah, yeah that's for sure. Yeah, Except so like LSILO. LSILO is pretty easy. Yeah, whoa, well, you hotel. Yeah, LSILO offense easy. isn't too bad just because you can spawn them all the way out. But at the same mm -hmm. time, 
the offense with spawn at LCLJ really sucks. So if they do get pushed up mid map, like oh yeah, you're chalk. You're chalk, you yeah. So you, you gotta fight through field. Like look at all these long range gunfights, potentially watch yeah. the flank. Like yep. it's a blender right now in control for all three of our maps. Obviously not as bad as Fortress because that map is basically one sided. But the other two, just like if you can get out your base, you have a chance. Yeah. But it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. But like Seattle has like the perfect player for that. Like Pred is like the best, yeah. like for getting in your side and then like like if Pred's on my side in Elosilo and I'm on defense, like I'm we're screwed. Like he's just gonna yeah. lurk around, he's gonna be at our AC, then he's gonna be back to our bottom mid. It's like nothing you could do. So it, it'll just be like how good teams can keep track of like that nuisance player that's on the other team. Mm -hmm. Like comms are huge in this game because of the mini map. Huge. So huge. Like like you don't even know where they're gonna be at. You have to get a call out. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna go with Surgeon's matchup as well. I think they take it um, in an interesting game. But after going through all these games, I think there might be a lot of game fives today. Yeah, I think today's gonna be a banger, man. I'm expecting nothing less. Day mm -hmm. one, Call of Duty League 2023 opening weekend is going to be lit. It's baby. gonna be That's lit. Sure. All right, so <laughs> we got some other news now that we went through all the uh, the predictions and stuff. I want to talk about this list that came out. It's the top 10 players according to the players themselves. Did you see this? Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Just tell him, yeah, unexpected at the number Phase four. in the top three. That's crazy. Selium, Simp, that... and Abizi, the core three. They got voted one, Damn. two, and three. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's, well, it's a line of phase. Like, those yeah. guys are kind of tough. They're yeah. tough. They're final. I just like to see low key Pratt after one year, bro. Six plus, six best, like hey. right behind Shotzi and Dashi. That guy is kind of diff. He is kind of diff. Kleenex make it up there, though. Is this just for this game? Uh, I mean, this is for, this is what they voted on, like from last year. From last because, year. Yeah, because Kleenex is a good ass player, bro. I, I think he when, I think player. when like pro players rate other players, you know this, bro. Like, Mm -hmm. all the time we don't like like when when you're a pro you know who is impacting the game you know what i mean For sure so it's like there are players that i thought were top 10 players top 15 players that the community did not think mm -hmm. were top 10 top 15 players back in the day so i mean this is sort of reflects that a little bit but yeah you can see they have uh i think the most interesting one is probably i think rc's being nine is probably the yeah, one that, that threw me off threw me off a little bit but i mean he brings a lot of, a lot of great stuff to a team. Yeah. Kenny in mm -hmm. seven after his turnaround, the last two events. Um, honestly, I thought like we would see Octane on this list after how good he got at the mm -hmm. end of last year. Um, who do we I'll feel like? RCDs, I would put, I would put Octane where RCDs is. Yeah. I think I would put Octane there as well. Personally. It's just yeah, hard because I, a lot I, of these I'd teams. Move Kleenex out and put Draza. Oh yeah. That'd be, it's a good shout. But Kleenex is a beast, man. Like, he is. He is. He's gross. He's gross. He just kind of lacked off of me at the end of the year last year. Like, and it was obviously, it was just like the team comp. Like, because when you look at the way Vanguard was played last year, Vance is always the guy that was going on the route. So Kleenex had to fight a lot of 1v2 gunfights. Yeah. So he didn't really have the best stats going into the end of the year. But we all know what kind of player he is. He's very, very annoying to play against. And if he's on point, he's getting a two piece every single time. So I think it's pretty crazy. Sib got the number eight spot too. I don't know. I don't have him in my top 10 just yet, but he did have a great year. So he did. He's a, he's a solid player. I think uh, like the best thing about Sib is like he just does his job, right? Like he's not. Mm -hmm. We've seen some other players in past who have gotten over that, but like they've they came out and they were like the the crazy slaying AR player, kind of like how Sib is. And then they mm -hmm. had like to take some time to learn the game. They you know they they played for kills, maybe chase red dots a little bit too much. We like Sib had that slump last year for like a month, and then he mm -hmm. just figured it out and he was like the ultimate teammate like didn't make too many mistakes like i don't even remember like coming back to a segment and being like oh that, that was sib sib made a huge mistake there like he was pretty mistake free player um and that's a testament to like seattle like the they did a good job sort of molding yeah. him because coming into their like when he was a rookie i remember hearing rumors like he had like a huge ego that he mm -hmm. like uh wasn't like the best teammate you yeah, would not be up. able to tell that from his performance last year on Seattle and the way he like carried himself. Yeah, that I I love Sib as a player because he's confident, but he's also very very humble. Yeah, like if the guy knows that he's not doing good or someone is doing better than him, he simply just says, "I got to put in more work." And that's a great mindset to have. Like I had that one on one conversation with him last year. Let me tell you, my guy Dante, he's one of the most like clear-minded guys I've ever met in in competitive. Because when you can talk shit, when you and play well at the same time, but then also be humble when you need to be humble, 
Like, that's a complete package. And the fact that you said he went like a month span without really performing at the highest performance. Of, yeah, it was like the pro am time. Himself to. And then he just came out of nowhere just swinging right back. Like, him and Pred at Major 3, they was up, it was up in the air for who was going to win MVP. Obviously, Pred with the SMG, he's going to get it over him because he was just more impactful. Yeah. But both of, the, both of those guys are gross. Sib is an overall great talent in the league, and I'm excited to see what he can do with you, too. It's crazy not to see Hydra on here, too. Ah, it's not really crazy because we all know Hydra's raw talent, but like, yeah, he's not, he's wise. not there. He's not there yet in terms of like impacting the game. Like these guys yeah. on this list, I yeah. feel you. Yep. All right. So that's something I wanted to talk about as well. And then, uh, GA them for, we don't need to talk about that. Where's the other, <laughs> Oh, the phase video. I wanted to watch this video that phase dropped. Uh, okay. do you have this loaded up the perception? Yeah, yeah, I do. Just Chat, have you guys seen one. this yet? The, uh, this is like, I think it's funny they named it Perception. I saw people tweet, it was like, they just Googled synonyms for, for vision. <laughs> it's like the same thing. <laughs> uh, episode zero, the preseason. We're going to watch this. It's five minutes, guys. Yeah, this is apparently going to be like their vision. I have not seen it yet. I didn't even watch the little trailer thing. But I'm pretty hyped. So let's uh, full screen this and let's get it popping. Oh, Andre, you ready? Yeah, give me a countdown. Three, two, one, play. Three, two, one. One, everybody look at MC and point at him. Making Slasher look like a unit. <laughs> yeah, Slasher's mad tall. Wow. No way I'm sitting there just pointing at my teammates. It's just the goat. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Jesus, these guys well, are obviously all after we five uh, foot and under, and they're the chance. scariest team in the league. Um, yep. Definitely not the season that we wanted. It was second, second, second second it felt like the second all year it's just like felt like the most repetitive season of all time and obviously uh after the season was over i think we all didn't really know where our heads were at but you know we ended up talking it out and figuring out like what was going on and um i think it was for us like in our best interest to like you know to find a, like a replacement for alec we knew that when the season ended, like something had to change. You know, the way that we picked up Austin, it's actually, it's actually funny. You know, we're, we're all sitting there one day, we're considering an AR, a few other players, and we're sitting there and selling him and says something else. He goes, I have a name in mind, boys. We're like, who is it? And I'm over here. I know, I know, I know who he's thinking of because me and MC, you know, we're on the same way. We're on the same wavelength over here. He goes, slasher. All of us in the call go, dude that's the fucking guy. Like we have to pick him up, like for sure. This is the guy that we need. We need a guy that's gonna get on every day. He's gonna hold every person on our team accountable in every aspect. Um, and it was honestly like a no brainer. So any no of the brainer. out there, that's the guy blessed, bro. who say that <laughs> we didn't want him, you are fucking wrong. He's our guy. Nicky D to sub pick up. Yup, got rid of the curse. Yep, I said get the face Overall, color on face. Good. I think we're making good progress. Um, I mean, I think the the most important thing at first was just like fit in, like you know what I mean, like find my place on the team, like vibe with people, like just go out and get food. I thought Austin had a hoop ring right movies, there. <laughs> whatever it may be, just to like you know what I mean, like get closer to the teammates and stuff like that. And then um, when we actually started playing, it was just kind of like get a feel for what's going on and like what we needed and like what I need to do. Um, and so yeah, just try basically just trying to find my place on the team. It's a right so, approach. Like, it's, a, it's a new environment mm -hmm. for me. Um, it's new for them also, but those three have played together for so long now. They kind of know what they do. I don't know what they do, so I have to kind of figure that out. Right now, I'm kind of like on the wave where I'm expecting the unexpected. Just like game wise, it's more like old school Call of Duty. So it's like a complete 180 from Vanguard and what we were doing. Like we were sliding into every hill nonstop, just running at people. Whereas now it's like a little bit more methodical. It can still be fast paced, but it's definitely more that old school Call of Duty feel, so people have to adjust and, and get used to it. Am I used to it? I'm a vet. I've been <laughs> used to it. <laughs> I've been waiting for this to happen. I mean, I'm. I still have to break bad tendencies from the games we have been playing, but like, I noticed right away, like, damn, I just had to be patient there. Whereas like before, like in Vanguard, I was like, if I was ever not moving, I was like, oh my god, I'm costing. I gotta slide somewhere, do something. Yeah. Else. Yeah. I I'm getting used to it though, for sure. Our vibes and everything have been great so far. And like going into scrims, you know, learning the game was like, it took a little bit of time for us. I feel like the first like week of scrims, it was just like getting a feel for the game, kind of like uh, what Austin said. And 
it's that like kid's a, different a pace demon at this game, sure. bro. This year, like, the <laughs> pace change from Vanguard to this year is completely different. It's, uh, you got to show this up, game is very bed, slow. You have like a very ratty play style. And like, I've finally, I feel like I've started finding my groove with that. And because like, it takes a minute to like, to, to like slow your game down, especially with a player like me, where I've always been a very fast player. And I feel like, like I said, I've already like kind of like getting my groove um and i've slowed my game down and like i've been more like of a ratty sub player and i feel like our team really? is like really starting to click and i feel like we're we're by the time the first matches come around i'm gonna i think we're all gonna be very confident in the way we've been playing i just love that you can actually kind of play call of duty the way it should be played again like setups wise teamwork wise like it's actually a crazy change of pace i don't think we've played a single team this year where you're like that guy's nasty it's usually whether the team is good or not, which I feel like that's how cold it is. That's dope. Um, mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, so, I mean, our practice this year, it's a, uh, I would say it's a lot of like m micro things, but like not really at the same time because this, this type of stuff matters so much, you know, playing your life, team shotting, making people commit, uh, just a whole bunch of teamwork aspects of the game. They're just so important. Um, and going to the first event, I honestly, I can't wait to see how quickly teams figure out how to play and you can separate the, you know, the teams who are stupid and the teams who are smart. That was pretty dope. I hope they continue to do good. videos like that. that. That actually came out really, really, really well. Um, let me go back to the double cam. Yeah, what do you think about like uh, what everything they said? Like was uh, saying he's going to be the rat player this year? Yeah, I, I, I think that's just simply how he's got to play. Because like the game is not that fast. You, I mean, like if you try to sprint out, jump around a corner, you will potentially get two bulleted. And so you'd rather sit the corner, potentially lay down. I've been seeing a lot of people lay down. And I know on their Every bellies, bro, licking the floor. Corner, they lay down and challenge a gunfight. And, and like that old school drop shot method is like something that players have to learn. Like it's a, t it's a tendency that you don't, you didn't really have in the last couple of titles. <laughs> That's a whole different aspect of the game. So I'm excited to see what this Atlanta phase can do. Obviously, we didn't get to hear from MC. I would have loved to hear from MC. That guy is gross. Yeah, they saw pointing at him and were like, yeah, you're not yeah, in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Slash has got to be, you know, the guy who says he just has to adapt, learn how his teammates play. Shouldn't be hard, though. You're playing with Atlanta phase. Mm -hmm. You should be okay in that aspect. But BZ, like you said, he's the one who really stood out there. The guy said, I have to play ratty. I have to slow down. So now... A BZ always went from that fast paced SMG in your face kind of two piece and everything. Now it's just going to be like you're playing against an annoying Abizi who you have to check every Well, he's also going to be running a Vaznev and everybody's going to have M4, yeah. so he's going to yeah, play this, like a rat. Yeah, like, bro, you can't is, really do nothing, you know? This is going to be tough, but I, I love the confidence that they have in Slasher. Usually when you draft, when you pick up a new player, you want to make that guy feel on top of the world. And obviously Slasher, he's so very humble. He wants to adapt around them, but they know, they said, this is our guy. This yeah. is the guy that we want to good. take our team to the next level. And now he knows that he's here to stay. So I'm excited to see what this team can do. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, let's take some questions from chat. I think that's okay. going to wrap up like the show portion of it. I appreciate you guys, uh, everybody coming out, showing sure, some sure. love. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got uh, our, our call times are early, bro. We're going to be in early to get ready for the show. It's going to be so lit, bro. But before we, uh, before we leave, guys, ask some questions in the chat. What do you guys want to know? Me and Jay will answer some of your guys' questions. And we're going to try to do these as often as possible, these mm -hmm. pre-shows. And uh, we'll be able to break stuff down more uh, towards week two when we have mm -hmm. some data and some match history. Uh, will this be on Spotify? Uh, yeah, this will be on Spotify. I am uh, getting my, I don't have my Spotify podcast, like a uh, portal thing yet because somebody else had it that I was doing it. Uh, so they have to give it back. And once I get that, these will all be up there. But for now, YouTube. Biggest surprise team of the year and breakout player of the year. Jay, who do you think is the breakout player this year? Um, <sighs> Believe it or not. Let me see. Who do we have? It could be like what a player who's not a rookie too that just breaks out and starts frying. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm I, I'm thinking, believe it or not, I think it's Afro's year. Really? I feel like Afro's going to have a great year. I feel like Afro finally got the opportunity to team with players that, who are like on a higher echelon. Because obviously London last year, they were pretty good, but they mm -hmm. just faced a lot of adversity. And Afro's always the guy that stands out. I feel like now that Afro knows left and right, he's got championship caliber players next to him. I feel like this is the year we truly get to see where Afro is and he gets to make a name for himself this year a good shout um surprise team of the year i think is legion and that's gonna be my yep. same answer for a dark horse i think they're gonna be like competitive um 
Yeah, I don't know. For breakout player of the year, I'm not sure. I'd have to do more thinking on that. I can't give you like a quick mm. answer. Uh, do you know if observers get red dots in the mini map? Jay, do you know that? Do they get red dots uh, in the mini no. map? Oh, nope. Okay, absolutely not. This guy's wearing Codcaster. There's no red dots. It's just literally red triangles and blue triangles. Yeah, you're going to see uh, everybody through the wall. You see everybody. Um, yeah, I don't know why I didn't even think about that. <laughs> so really, yeah. uh, who do you have winning the first major and champs? Dude, that's a crazy question. Oh, no, uh, no. Phase, phase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll probably go right there with you, bro. Phase, phase. Like, they got to turn this second place year around. Uh, chances, Illy, Shotzi, and Dashi going to next year as a trio. I think pretty high. What yeah, do you I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's most likely how it's going to be. <laughs> Gump is retiring, so that leaves those that team at three. Why would you want to break that team up? Yeah, They're pretty solid. You just gotta fill some on the end if Scump does fully re decide to retire at the end. So I wouldn't break them up. Who's your dark horse team? Is it Legion as well? Yeah, no, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. I think it's 100 sure. because if you think about how bad they were, like, yeah, dude. they only got two wins all season last year. Mm -hmm. They come in with a team that's just straight hungry. Clay on the redemption, like Donnie Temp, even though he was fourth overall in KD last year. Got two wins. Wasn't nothing. But if I don't go Legion, I'm going Gorillas. That'll be okay. my other Dark Horse team. That's I think I think people are like writing them off, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Like they have a solid team. Like Balmain Spart was nasty when he came in and like it's RCDs and Hook. Like what? Uh how do you think Florida will do? Uh, I don't know. Like it depends on how good that Vic cool guy is. And then Brax coming in. Like we gotta see him as well. It's been so long. Like, I'll be honest, it's it's looking grim when you just look at the roster, but it could be it could be better than we think uh i feel like uh, they're got paris in the league no more jason i'm sorry it's las vegas now yeah do that um mvp I saw it. I saw it. and rookie of the year we only have one rookie isn't it vickle the only rookie yeah uh, no vickle yeah i guess yeah, he's Vickle's the only rookie like, yeah i don't know if we count brack oh scrappy scrappy is a rookie right Scrappy's also a rookie yeah yeah brack's not a rookie he's just like returning right yeah like, because he made his he's a pro back yeah, so I guess Scrappy and I would pick Scrappy and MVP. I don't know. I saw a I saw a question up there. Let me scroll up a little bit. Thoughts on Twitch exclusivity? I'm so gas. This is lit, Twitch. bro. Let me tell you, chat. I'm so gassed we're back on Twitch. It means watch parties can happen. Everybody that watches Call of Duty, you can all tune in on Twitch.tv. You can do a watch party. It's all allowed now. Bro, That's it's so, so lit. lit. Like when when so I look lit. for streams, bro, like other esports when they have big tournaments and stuff, like I'll just go to Twitch and be like, oh shit, this is live and I'll watch it. We're gonna have so many new faces. Um Yeah, I think it's huge, bro. Like it's where COD like started, bro, on Twitch way back in the oh, day. God. Like it's gonna make it so much better, man. Like I'm so yes. happy. Um, and today's gonna be epic i saw some people were mad though actually yesterday because like the quality on youtube is like better in their eyes which i guess and then maybe like the vod factor but but you can't beat the amount of new faces that are going to come here because we're on twitch and it's 100%. on the call of duty twitch too like mm -hmm. that is so crazy i think um, they're mad because they can't just go simply to youtube after that and look up the gameplay yeah well maybe you still be able to who knows uh yeah. team that will not live up to expectations Ooh, nick that's a spicy one. Ooh, um what are, well it depends on the expectations like what are the expectations for by the community on thieves to like win again because if so maybe them uh i the easy answer would be like optic texas because the expectations are literally through the high. roof yeah super high. um and it would be basically impossible to live up to those expectations like the, a lot of the fans want them to win every event so scump comes back <laughs> um i think i think for me it's gonna be seattle because that's one of the two teams i mean one of the three teams who didn't make a roster change and you know they only did win one event last year which was major three kind of fell off a little bit during major four they didn't really have the best perform what they, they got top three at champs last year that's why they decided to stick together but this is a team who now we hold at the higher echelon of teams so like if they come out and they start lacking off, like, I think this is the team that can really just let us down, potentially, if they don't start off on the right foot. I think I might go Toronto, even though I think they're going to be really good. Yeah, I think Toronto's going to be filled. I don't know, man. It's, it's I got to watch moment, some, bro. I got to watch some matches, bro. I can't, that's such a hot take. I don't, Yeah. right now, I look at these teams, and like, they made good moves. Every team is solid. Mm -hmm. It depends on the teamwork. Uh, do you, will the VODs be uploaded to YouTube? So I don't have the answer to that, but I think so. 
We already did the predictions, Ginger, earlier today. Mm -hmm. It'll be on the VOD. All right, well, I think that's going to be it, uh, yeah, Jay. It's been a good show, yeah. bro. Got to get yeah, ready. That's a nice little, nice little 45, 50-minute show. Got to get ready for day Got to get the mind right, too. None. That's what yeah, the pre-show is for. Mm -hmm. That's facts. That's facts. Uh, thank you for joining me. Jay will be joining for the podcast in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to keep doing this. Uh, talk to you guys in the next one. And if you can, when this YouTube video goes up, go show it some love so it allows us to do more. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.